Welcome to Catacomb FM, the podcast awakening the church to a new and difficult age. Christianity on the margins. Welcome everybody to our podcast. Uh, Today I want to look at the whole thing about the church, what we call the church, why we should bother to have anything to do with the church. And it's great to be joined by my friend and colleague here, Brandon Latouni. Brandon, how are things? Things are well. It's The sun is out for the first time in months, <laughs> so it's great. <laughs> it's great to have all that, isn't it? To, uh, to actually feel uh, us coming out of the winter into spring. However, in the, the Lenten season is cranking up, isn't it? We're, we're coming into yeah. uh, a more intense time. Yeah, things are about, uh, liturgically speaking, get a lot darker um, for the time being. But outside the window, the flowers are blooming and the the sun is shining and it it does my very Californian heart quite good, I think. You're getting the the vitamin D that you need. Yeah, yeah. That plus the supplements (laughs) were prescribed. (laughs) Oh, good Lord. Well, um, we want to look at this subject of the church and here i mean the community not the building whether the local church or a particular denomination or the global church why should we bother with this thing that we call uh, the church do we need it um now i'm exploring this because since covid tide i've noticed that there has been a little bit of a reawakening to the christian faith uh, I've seen that in the, the lovely emails and letters that I, I've received. But one of the core common patterns in this is that people feel shy about going to church. Hmm. Uh, we've seen this in our Irreverent podcast. Uh, we saw this recently in the interview, say, with Lord David Frost, who was able to put his hand up and say, you know, Yes, uh, I believe in all of this. It's just the church that I have uh, a problem with. Uh, And so that's been a commonality in in this, in in all these sort of letters and emails uh, and posts that I've seen people put out there. Yes, we can... um, now see that there are some that there is great truth in Christianity. Yes, I can say that uh, I am now a, a Christian, but I'm not so sure about the whole church thing. I feel a bit church shy. That's uh, what a lot of these letters. That's the sort of thing that we're getting back. I think what we want to do today is uh, explore that and argue a case to say actually the church is an essential part of uh, our Christian our Christian life. Well, we're going to begin with Matthew's Gospel. Matthew's Gospel mentions the word church, unlike the other evangelists. Uh, and chapter 16 is uh, as good as any place to touch upon this. Brandon, can I hand the Bible over to you? Yeah, absolutely. So this is Matthew... Uh, 16 beginning at the 13th verse now when jesus came into the district of caesarea philippi he asked his disciples who do you say that the son of man is and they said some say john the baptist but others elijah and still others jeremiah or one of the prophets he said to them but who do you say that i am simon peter answered you are the messiah the son of the living god and jesus answered him Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. Some years ago, I was at a a clergy conference, then uh, as a young priest helping facilitate. And um, I was looking around at really a a cohort of very elderly men. 
um, and thinking, where on earth is <laughs> is this going? How can this bunch uh, be at the the vanguard of uh, the kingdom of God? <laughs> and I remember one of them came to him, clearly seeing, guessing what was in my mind, said, "You know, this this here son is evidence." of the working of the Holy Spirit because yes we are a pathetic bunch here <laughs> but if it wasn't for the Holy Spirit the whole thing would have collapsed years ago. Uh, Christ promises the church, uh, guarantees the church an, an indestructibility uh, and um, we can gain great hope from that. Thank the Lord that the church it, doesn't rely on our efforts solely, that the grace of God uh, undergirds it. Otherwise, we'd be in trouble. Uh, so what do, you, what do you think, Brandon, having read that? Does that resonate with you? Yeah, well, it resonates, maybe not, because I think it's very easy to see the flaws of the church around us and then begin to question what Jesus said to St. Peter about the whole gates of hell bit. Um, but it is scripture, and we take scripture as the word of God. Um, if you don't mind, I'd also like to read, um, the 39 Articles has a brief little paragraph on what the church is as well, that I think would serve as a good jumping off point. Sure. If we um, first maybe define what the church has said the church is, <laughs> and then maybe we can tackle the, some of the concerns of those emails that you mentioned. So. Uh, this is Article 19. Um, if you're an Anglican, you may be familiar with the 39 Articles of Religion, but it's basically 39 very brief statements of Christian belief um, about certain subjects. It's by no means exhaustive, but it's it's usually a good starting point for various bits of theology in our tradition. And you could find those online, or you could, even better, go down to your local church, and hopefully <laughs> there's a Book of Common Prayer Yes. in the back there and you can open it up and towards the end are the 39 articles yes it's also on the church of england website if that's easier for you but <laughs> the visible church of christ is a congregation of faithful men in which the pure word of god is preached and the sacraments be duly ministered according to christ's ordinance and all those things that of necessity are requisite to the same and then it has a very small sentence at the very end about the fallibility of the church that sometimes it can err. As the church of Jerusalem, Alexandria, and Antioch have erred, so also the church of Rome hath erred, not only in their living and manner of ceremonies, but also in matters of faith. So that last sentence in the time of its writing was polemical against the church of Rome, but it's also codified this belief that we have that not everything that the church says in, in its day and age um, is the infallible word of God. Um, and we can probably talk about infallibility and, and, and how dogma works in the church a little later into this episode. Um, but just because your vicar has said something does not mean that it is God speaking, um, but that we can err, just like if you were to finish St. Matthew's Gospel. I might gospel. edit that bit out, actually. But oh, yeah. really? <laughs> <laughs> carry on, carry on. We'll let you carry on. But just like... Um, you know, if you were to finish St. Matthew's Gospel that we read, we see St. Peter erring, you know, pretty significantly towards the end, mm -hmm. uh, to the point where he renounces Christ and then has to be restored. Um, so what do we do with that tension? Christ said, on this rock I will build my church, your Peter, which means rock, and then the rock fails mm -hmm. <laughs> and then has to be restored. Mm -hmm. That also has to inform um, our understanding of what it means to be a church, um, looking at the church in light of history,